The European Cricket Network is here in Italy, Rome. And like a lot of the countries on the network that we visit to, there's some amazing stories that we hear behind the scenes. People that are the founders of cricket in the countries that they're in. And it's our privilege and my privilege to be talking to Alfonso Jairaja, the man who started everything here in Italy. Alfonso, it's lovely nice to meet you. Tell me a little bit about yourself first, where you started playing cricket and how you got to Italy. I started my cricket career in Sri Lanka, in the north of Sri Lanka, in Jaffna, at St. Patrick's College. And then I got a scholarship to study in the University of Rome. I came here. And in the 80s, there was an organization where the embassies were playing cricket. So I joined them and we played in the center of Rome till 1972. 73 became a public park. So we started to play far away, 15 kilometers from Rome. Slowly, we didn't have good players coming for the embassies to work. So I met one Italian called Gambino. Yeah. Together we started for the Cricket Italy. We started the Cricket Italy with first year, we had only four teams in Rome. Oh yes, yeah, well, my club, which was Doria Bampiri Cricket Club, the same name of the villa where we were playing. We didn't have a good ground. In 82, we got the ground inside the Hippodromo di Cavanelle, where the horse races. Yeah, going. I know the ground very well, yeah. So we changed the name into Rome, Cavanelle Cricket Club. I took a national team to England. And captain the Italian national And what team. year was that? It was in 84. We played against the local clubs and when we came back, Italian papers, because on uh, August, those days, football was not there. So it was empty almost, the papers. So they yeah. were talking about Italian cricket, saying that, oh, we went to England, the father of cricket, and we played there. So the boys from various countries, towns in Rome, they called us. So that we went there and with the English teacher and the Italian teacher, we formed clubs in various parts of Rome together with Simone Gambino. Amazing story. I mean, during that time, there must be so many highlights. Are there one or two that really come to mind uh, in those days? I mean, going to England on tour, that must be something fascinating. But what about yourself, some personal highlights? Apart from winning the first Italian tournament, which was six or eight tournament, with a team with uh, six different nations, that is the Australians, Italian, Syrian, Indian, Italian, myself, and the South African yeah. we won the tournament. And took a, in a 40 over game, I got a hat trick against the Byron of Corfu. Italian cricket's come a long way since then. And I know that you've always been sort of like the godfather of cricket. You still play yourself at 77. Tell us what it's like when you're still playing. I mean, how do you feel when you're still taking the field? And how do you also feel when so much cricket has developed here in Italy? No, no, cricket has developed quite a lot. I'm happy because of we started with four clubs and now we have more than 50 teams playing and uh, there are a lot of uh, Asians playing in the team. And in our club, we have all the games, we have a minimum seven Italians who learn their cricket in Italy. And so I am proud of that because we have in the team everybody. You name a country and we have that player. There. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. In the national team, we have players coming from Australia, Italians who are playing in Australia, in South Africa, in England. So the standard is high now. And the team, our Italian team is now in the first 32, so they are playing well. Normally I play the over 50 tournaments. And sometimes we are short of players and I play also the Italian Championship. I know to most people that I speak to, you have the utmost respect from a lot of people out here, especially a lot of the youngsters still while they're playing, they look up to you. And I know that you've brought us a number of memorabilia. So maybe we can take a time to take a look at some of the things that you brought for us to, to look at and share. Yeah, this is a club for which I played the first time, Commonwealth Vargas Cricket Club. It was in 1969. We played inside the Villa Doria Pamphili, which was a private Park and this was the club's players and my name is there and this is all other players who participated in the tournament. Some of them are priests and some are even cardinals. So, Keith Richmond, he was the captain of the team. Roland French, he was the secretary general of the Commonwealth War Graves Commission. Here this my name. FJ Raja. We signed all these things because we knew that uh, the game is going to be stopped and then inside the villa. So we signed these bets with all the players who are playing for the club, plus all the priests and other embassies players. 
When we were playing at, uh, inside the villa, we played with Rome Sports Association and we toured Greece, Corfu, where we had a match against the Byron Cricket Club on the 16th of June 1974. And I took a hat trick, 14.5 overs, 5 marines, 24, and 6 wickets. So when the villa, Turiya Pramfili ground, became a public park and we were unable to play there, we started for the Italians in 1980 and we had the first tournament, which was a, which was a six aside tournament. And our club, Turiya Pramfili Cricket Club, won the tournament. And we had, I'm proud to say, we had everybody there. We said Italian Syrian, this is myself, this is Indian Italian, Maxa Costa, and this is. Uh, Mr. Father Coleridge, and he's uh, at, uh, at the moment Archbishop of B Brisbane. And this is Father Matheson, he's also a priest. And this is Kurkam, he's from South Africa. And this is the first tournament the Association Italian Cricket played, and we won the tournament. The first tournament was played at St. George's School. There was no grass, it was just an uh, artificial pitch, and we played there. But slowly, I, I managed to get a ground inside the race course of Rome so that we changed the name from Doria Pamphili Cricket Club to Capanella Cricket Club. And this is a shield, and you'll find out that this has, it seems to be a Sam Rock. Uh, it's one thing that I am from St. Patrick's College. Second, this was the, the horse was inside this one. And I changed it to a cricket wicket. And since we have a good bowling side, I put the wicket rolling down. This is the shield we are continuing to have. This is one of the catches I took, but uh, it was taken by the newspaper Time magazine, Time of Italy. I didn't know. They sent it to me saying that this is a catch you took yesterday. And we played against the uh, Lazio Cricket Club, which was our enemies. That is, in Rome, there are two clubs. There is our club, and Lazio is the other team. But now we have more than 10 teams in Rome. And you can see that we have a Jambwe, which is Sam Rock Place. As you know, we played 40 over games in those days, and we used to play with whites. Then the 20, 50 over games and T20 came, and we were forced to play with the colored one. But it was good because then, with that only, the Italians, they learned that there's a team inside and one team is outside. Because when you play with whites, they don't understand why everybody is in whites. So this is one of my shirts. I'm the number one. <laughs> I thought so. Thank you very much for sharing some of those historical moments. It's absolutely brilliant, some of that memorabilia. But of course, that's in the past. Now, what about the future of Italian cricket? Of course, big names like Christian Vieri, who is, of course, a famous footballer that also played cricket, has helped to put cricket on the map for Italy. But where do you see the future of Italian cricket? From next year, the cricket is in the Coney. Coney is the Olympic body, and since in four years time cricket will be in Olympics. So we are promoted to the uh, Kony and yeah. we are like footballers and the swimming, we are in that body. And we hope that will give us a big uh, boost because if it is in the television, most of the Italian parents, they will look at it. We go to the school, but the boys are very happy to play, but the parents doesn't know the game. Mm. So it's very difficult for them to understand the game. If it is in the Olympics, they can watch that in the TV and they can understand. Now in the national team, we have Australians, Italian Australians, Italian South Africans, uh, Italians who are playing in England are coming and playing and they're helping us in the club to improve our youngsters. We hope that uh, since there are a lot of Asian boys here in Italy, they are also playing with us. Uh, Italians will learn. Uh, I'm sure that once I told the British papers that uh, Italy will beat England one day like they do it in football. You're talking about when Italy will beat England one day, of course. It must have been a very proud moment for yourself and of course all the Italians went back in 2021 Italy beat England in the European Cricket yeah, Championship yeah, of course remember that it was the Baljeet Singh who scored that 43 I mean you must have been watching that that must have been a very proud moment yeah I'm very happy because I was there and we never thought that we would have at that point we would have beaten the English but I thought it would take another 10 years but we did it earlier than that it's been absolutely wonderful talking to you thank you very much thank for you, your man. time and you know what I know that you might even be playing the next match. So how about that? The 77-year-old who
will maybe be turning his arm over. Well, you hear all the good stories here on the European Cricket Network. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. And stay tuned for more behind the scenes content coming your way.